Hey everyone, sorry if you were tuned in there before, I had some technical difficulties, but I think that the Wi-Fi is going strong, so we'll get this one going again. The book I'm going to read to you today is called First Peas to the Table. It's by Susan Grigsby and illustrated by Nicole Tadgell. And we planted some peas out in the outdoor classroom at CCUA a week or two ago, and they're starting to pop out. I have some peas in my garden I've been waiting on for a while, so this book will tell you a little bit about that. Every spring, Ms. Garcia's class grows a different kind of garden. In February, she announced that our class was going to plant a garden like Thomas Jefferson's. No fair, I whispered to my friend Shakela. Last year, they got to plant a pizza garden. Shh, Shakela replied as Ms. Garcia started saying something about a contest. A contest? What kind of contest? I asked. A first peas to the table contest, Ms. Garcia said. When Jefferson was older, he and his neighbors had one every spring. For our garden contest, you'll each be given a small spot for planting peas. She held up a bowl. The winner will be the first student who can fill this bowl with shelled peas and set them on the table to eat. Some kids said, yuck. But Ms. Garcia said that fresh peas tasted as sweet as candy and were one of Jefferson's favorite foods. If peas taste as good as candy, I'm planting a ton, Shakela said. Let the great pea race begin. I really, really wanted to win when Ms. Garcia showed us the winner's crown. It was green and gold with emerald-colored pea-sized jewels all around it. Thomas Jefferson, she said, called agriculture the crown of all sciences. Be bold and experiment, Ms. Garcia said. Jefferson traded seeds with people around the world. Then he used his gar his garden like then he used his garden like a giant science lab to test which plants would grow best. I pulled a shiny nickel from my pocket. Jefferson was on the front and his home Monticello was on the back. This would be my good luck charm for winning, I decided. The next day, we made journals to record our notes in, just like Thomas Jefferson did. His garden book was like a diary with notes about everything he planted. And we learned a lot about peas. Jefferson said that you had to have really healthy soil to grow healthy plants. Compost, made of plant waste that's rotted, add nutrients to the soil. We took some compost from the school's bin and mixed it into the garden beds. On Valentine's Day, Miss Garcia brought in 10 different varieties of pea seeds. They had fancy names like emerald treasures and pearls in a pod. We each got a packet of 20 seeds of one variety, and then we had a trading party. Shakela ended up with two seeds from each variety, but I held on to the 20 I started with. They were called Sweet Victory Peas. That name sounded like a winner to me. Ms. Garcia said that we could get a head start by planting some peas inside at home and then transplanting them at school in March. But I was going to get a double head start because I'd found a pea growing tip in a copy of Jefferson's garden book and I was keeping it. Top secret. At home, I put eight tiny pea seeds into a bowl of water. What are you doing, my mother asked. Making pea soup? I'll tell you if you can keep it a secret, I told her. In 1771, Jefferson wrote that he soaked his pea seeds for 24 hours before he planted them. The next day, I planted my soaked seeds 
and place the pots on a sunny windowsill with my good luck nickel next to them. Four times a day I checked on my plants and gave them water. But after two weeks and no signs of green, I dug up a seed. It was rotten mush from too much water. So I started all over with eight more seeds and less watering. Shakela started carrying home a lot of books on garden plants and some strange stuff from the school's recycling resource room. What's all this for, I asked. Your peas aren't grown yet, are they? Maybe, she smiled. Or maybe not. Are yours? Maybe, or maybe not, I replied. Shakela laughed. <laughs> May the boldest gardener win. I ran home after school to check my peas. My little seeds had started sprouting. I made a name tag for each pot. Penelope, Princess, Pickles. Grow faster, I whispered to my plants. As soon as you're strong enough, I'm moving you to a real garden. On March 21st, the first day of spring, we worked on our garden's main beds. Like Jefferson, we divided them into three sections for roots, fruits, and leaves. But when we got ready to mark which plants went in which section, we got confused. Cucumbers and peppers aren't fruits, insisted Jacob. They're vegetables. So Shakela grabbed a science book and we sorted things out. Remember, Shakela directed, roots are foods that grow underground, like carrots. Leaves are leaves we eat, like lettuce. And cucumbers, peppers, and tomatoes are called fruits because they grow from a flower and have seeds inside the part that you eat. But those won't get planted until the weather warms up more. The next day I transplanted my eight home plants into my pea patch and I planted my last four seeds. Then I stuck in a whirly gig to scare away the hungry birds. In the big garden bed, tiny ruffled lettuce leaves were coming up. I felt like a gardening champion until I walked over to Shakela's pea patch. It looked like a science fair exhibit. She had 10 different types of peas labeled like Jefferson's with numbers and some of her transplants were twice the size of mine. When I saw the different types of trellises she'd made, I remembered that peas like some kind of support. That way they stay out of the mud and get more sunshine. In April, we went outside every day to weed the beds and record the progress of our plants. Our lettuce was growing the fastest of all. I invented a trellis for my peas with bells that played soft music in the wind. Jefferson won a gold medal for his invention of a garden plow. Maybe someday I'd win a gold medal for an invention too. One sunny day, I saw that Shakela's plants had little white blossoms all over them. I raced to my pea patch, hoping to find some flowers on my plants. Penelope Pea had a blossom. I was so happy that I did a little pea blossom dance. Shakela and I sat down and drew pea, pea, pea blossoms in our journals. I wish I could draw as well as you, she said. I wish that my plants were as big as yours, I replied. Thomas Jefferson almost always lost the first piece to the table contest to his neighbor, Mr. Divers, Shakela said, reminding me of the story Ms. Garcia had told us. But they stayed friends. You're right, I said, giving her a hug, but I still hope that my plants win.
By early May I had lots of blossoms, and six blossoms had made tiny pods. One day the sky grew dark, and a big windstorm came hooting and hollering over the school. When it ended, we went outside to check our plants. Mine were okay, but then I heard Shakela crying out, Oh no! Her trellises had tumbled into a terrible tangle. It looks like you'll win now, she said. My plants are ruined. No, they're not, I said. I'll help you fix them. On the 14th of May, we had a celebration lunch with the first harvest of our lettuce and a bowl of fresh peas. But the peas were not mine. They were Shakela's, and she was crowned the winner of our first peas to the table contest. Congratulations, I said. You did a good job. Thanks, she said. I bet that your plants will be second. They look really good. Maybe, I replied, but it feels like I've been waiting for them forever. Then I went to check on my slow poke peas. My first pod, plump and firm, was ready to be picked. I plucked it off, popped it open, and tasted a pea. It was as sweet as candy, and I had grown it all by myself. No wonder Thomas Jefferson liked gardening so much. From one tiny seed, a whole plant could grow, full of flowers first, then giving you the sweetest peas in the whole world. Some things were worth waiting for. The end. That was first piece to the table. I hope you guys enjoy that, and I hope that soon we all get to enjoy some sweet peas from our gardens. And... Um, tune in next Monday for another Veg Out video and again next Friday for a story time. Take care. Have a good weekend.